Well, I grew up in the late 70s and early 80s, so I remember inflation and how corrosive it was to economic growth. And so I'm, I'm concerned when I hear talk about running economies hot and we're okay with inflation. And you know how difficult it can be to root that out once it takes hold. And so I think it is a real risk. I, you're dealing with probably two to three generations of investors that have never managed a real interest rate upcycle um, mm. and or a real inflation situation. And that's what we likely have going forward here, given the amount of money and liquidity chasing the amount of goods and services at the moment. And we just don't know how they're going to react. And as a result, you've got a lot of potential volatility um, surrounding inflation and, and interest rates. And uh, I think investors are reacting from that, you know, to that from time to time. We saw it in February. We're likely going to see it again. And so I think that has implications for a bunch of markets, whether it's commodities um, yeah. and the cycle we have going on there with respect to, um, you know, not a lot of supply and increasing demand. It has issues with equities. Um, are investors going to still want to pay the high multiples when the cost of capital goes up and or inflation sure. begins to eat into margins in a material way? And it also impacts precious metals where, you know, alternative stores of value and currency um, become more valuable in a scenario where the, the value of the unit, the uh, value of the paper money goes down. So th there's a lot of implications we just don't know yet and uh, and a lot of questions to be answered. And so investors need to be diversified. They need to hedge their bets and they need to be prepared for a variety of different outcomes in a way that they didn't have to be during the, the teens. It was a, a one market, yeah. one direction trade. And I think it's going to be different now. If you want to ride the commodities boom, I mean, we were just discussing what's been happening in base metals and oil as well. I mean, energy for the S&P 500 among the best sectors, I think the best sector this year. So if you want, yep. if you believe this trend is set to continue, I mean, do you do it through a broad based ETF? Do you do it by picking some of the key players in terms of the energy names and the producers? How do you play this trend? Well, we're doing it primarily through the equities of, of the producers, um, but we do hold physical gold and silver as an alternative currency store in our portfolio as well. But there are a variety of ways you can do it. Number one, you got to decide whether you want to own the commodity or equities as such. Number two, whether you want to own a basket or an index, and there's several of them, and there's several ETFs that play off of that. And then thirdly, if you want to be a stock picker and you want to overweight certain sectors that maybe aren't being properly analyzed in the in the, the ETFs you're looking at. So there's a variety of ways to do that. And then if you want to lever up, you can always uh, do options and, and go long and short and do a variety of things to enhance a position one way or the other. We generally don't we, we don't do that. We're we're long only. Right. And uh, we hedge our bets among a, a bunch of different areas. Sure. So we're playing the equities of some of the main producers in some of these areas. And I do think we're at the beginning stages of a commodity sure. cycle that's going to last several years. We had a super cycle end in 2013. Right. We had several years of basing. And the, the supply demand characteristics to likely decline in the U.S. dollar going forward as global economies grow sure. and come out of COVID bode well for commodities going forward.